Today, Hikaru played a beautiful game against Super Grandmaster Tamer Radyabov, who's rated over 2750. Today, I'm here with my mom, Grandmaster <laughs> Pia Kramling, and we're going to be showing you this game that was played in the round two of The Candidates. So if you like this video and if you like our analysis, please like and subscribe. It supports us a lot. And yeah, let's go and get started. So Hikaru was playing with the white pieces again, Tamar Radyabov. Now, uh, Tamar Radyabov, he was invited um, uh, from FIDE. Uh, there's always one person that gets invited and he was the one who was invited. So Hikaru with the white pieces, e4 was the way he started, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and bishop b5. So here uh, we had a Ruy Lopez, yeah, and uh, knight f6, in d3. Yeah, and the curious thing is that uh, black is trying to get into the Berlin Wall, and this is exactly the position uh, Nakamura had yesterday, but with the black pieces, and now his opponent is actually repeating what he played yesterday. And so, yeah, that it was very, very curious to see the same position on the board, but with Nakamura's white today. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so bishop c5, knight bd2, and this is also very similar to what happened yesterday, although mm. yesterday um, he corresponded with the black pieces against Fabi, and Fabi decided to go for bishop takes c6 before uh, knight d2. So, so this is the difference, I suppose. Mm. Exactly. So knight d4 was played here, and knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. Yeah, and now we are out. It's not as the game yesterday. I was wondering who would be the first one to change. And I guess it was black, but okay, uh, Nakamura also changed a little bit before without taking on c6. So yeah, so we get a completely different positions. C3, and what is what is the idea of going knight d4 and exchanging? Uh, the idea is actually that you can, um, uh, because now you can play c6 and d5, so you can use your pawns in the center, and uh, it's it's a move you only want to play in general when you, you prefer to play when you can take back on d4 with the bishop, so you don't have to get a double pawn. So so this is actually the idea, and it's a very logical idea, because uh, you, you want to go c6 and d5 and to challenge the center. Yeah, mm. and you can see that white is trying to do the exact same thing. White is also trying to to challenge the center with d4, with c3 and d4. Yeah, and this was like a shocking move because you play this already now without castling. The, the pawn in d4 is, is just hanging and it's it's like, uh, yeah, that was a great surprise to see this. Because you're, you're basically giving a pawn right now. You're sacrificing a pawn. Mm. Um, even though if e takes d4, the idea is to go e5 and not to take back. So you're sacrificing. You're, so you're sacrificing a pawn, and here I suppose that that he has d takes c three. Yeah. To take here. It, it, yeah. It, 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 exactly. And I, I'm not sure what's going to happen, but maybe he has to take back. And if black goes knight d5, you have knight d4 and some ex uh, some compensation. But I'm not sure what is the plan here. So you really need to know that uh, exactly because if if, if Black, for example, now defend the knight on, on with c6, we have knight d6, and you don't want to allow this. No, no, then there's knight d6, mm. and there's a lot of holes mm. in the center. So, so, uh, so maybe here you can go castle, something like queen takes d5, c6, mm. and just play this position. But mm. basically, white gives a pawn and says, I have compensation for it mm. with e5 if you take it. So black decided to not take it and went for c6, attacking the bishop. Mm. Now in this position, d takes e5 was played because if black now takes a bishop, which is what they did, white can take the knight. Mm, exactly. So c takes b5, e takes f6, and queen takes f6. Now there's a checkmate thread. Um, so castles and castles, normal, just to def defend the king. And now queen h5, and this I thought was... I mean, Hikaru was playing so quickly in the beginning, so this has to have been preparation. But I just thought that this was such a such a, an amazing move because th there are several ideas with it. I guess you're looking towards the king side, but you're also threatening the b5 pawn. I guess that's the main idea, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the ideas. Another idea is also that you want to um, maybe you want to play e5, knight e4, bishop g5, or knight g5. You are trying to play against this isolated pawn on d7 and trying to make it difficult to move the pawn. And of so course, the bishop can't leave the square mm -hmm. yeah exactly but of course th now th th you're planning to take on b5 so this is the first thing black has to to do something about and that is what they did they went queen c6 defending the pawn on b5 rookie one to uh to i guess defend this pawn mm. um 
And then rook e8 was played here. Mm. And um, white played knight f3. And now came a very interesting move because black has this problem right now where black cannot, I mean, black needs to do something about this bishop. Black cannot leave the bishop there forever because that would be a very sad bishop. So what black did now was actually they went d5 and sacrificed this pawn to be able to bring out the bishop and say, okay, if you take, we're going to be opening up the e-file, but you're going to get some pieces. They're going to be in kind of a funny positions and I might get a lot of initiative for giving mm. that pawn. Mm. Exactly, because it was too dangerous to take an e4. So black had to do something. And I think d5 was uh, the, the, really the best moment. And we can show what happens if rook takes e4, because obviously right now white is um, giving a pawn. So it's always important to see what happens if you take that pawn. But if rook takes e4, what we... Uh, yeah, what we were thinking about before was just to go bishop d2. Bishop d2 or bishop f4 even. Or, or bishop f4, or one or of the moves. And mm -hmm. the idea is that you cannot take this because there's going to be then rook a check, maybe even bishop f4. Mm -hmm. Or yes. rook a checkmate. Mm -hmm. um, and if you go... Yeah, I don't, I don't, I don't really know. But let's say that you would go something like d5, then there is knight g5. Mm -hmm. And you're threatening both checkmate on this. Yeah, and you threaten against h7, f7, and if you take on e1, we take back, and we have still these back rank problems and all the threats. So this is just winning for white. Hmm. Yeah, so this is just completely winning for white. And if you take here now, then white is going to get this whole open file, and you're threatening once again, you're threatening uh, uh, the back rank checkmate, so you go d5, and then knight g5, and this transposes to hmm. the previous position. Exactly. Hmm. So... Yeah, this was this is a really strong idea. It's really dangerous to take on e4. Mm. So, and that's why instead of taking a pawn, black is giving a pawn. And this is a little bit, you know, because you're looking for initiative, you're looking for, uh, um, or for, here he's looking for to get out with the pieces. He had this big problem with the bishop on c8. He had to be careful, so not knight g5 was coming, threatening lots of things against the king. And so that's why he played his move to, like you say, there will be not so much harmony with the white pieces. And he will hope that he will get the piece pawn back or to compensate with the uh, active piece play. Mm. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, and so, I mean, white at this point pretty much needs to almost take, yeah? Because I guess that if you just go e5 or something, it doesn't really make a lot of sense because now bis the bishop can just develop. Yes. After if you go e5, may maybe you will go some... Uh, I don't know, maybe just bishop d7 simply, but we just go e5 and we go bishop d7 and we will get out with the piece. It will be very, very solid position. A very solid position, but white right now is trying to get an advan advantage. So mm. uh, e takes d5, threatening the queen, and yeah, I guess queen takes d5 could have been played too. That was another idea mm. uh, to go for that, but, but he went for a little bit, I guess, more forcing e takes d5. Yeah, because you get it with tempo and, you know, uh, you have the queen left, maybe with the queen of the, queen of the knight can be strong to the other. And ex exactly also because you, you play this with the tempo, so you're hoping that this will give you the extra time to get out with the pieces uh, on the queen side. Hmm. Uh, exactly. So rook takes c1 was played, which was kind of forced almost. It's very important, so the knight has to go back to be more passive piece. Otherwise, white is just not going to have any problems you know, if the queen goes to d7, bish the bishop can just develop and it's just amazing. Mm. So uh, now at least black is getting some counterplay for that pawn. So knight takes e1 and queen c4, and this is a really nice move. This is a very good move. It's controlling all the squares for the knight. And it's it's also now the plan is bishop g4, yes, to to, to, to batter the queen there and to go rook d8 and just to take back the pawn. So white has to do something about that. Yeah, and so what White did about that was to go h3 uh, to avoid bishop g4, but this knight and this bishop and these, this rook, they're definitely not in their optimal position right now. Bishop d7 was played, and um, yeah, now queen f3 was the move that was played, because if I guess if, if, if something like knight c2 to try to get the knight out, um, well then queen a4 I think looks like a really strong move, mm. threatening the knight, there are threats, um, if the knight moves somewhere randomly, there's queen e1 check. Um, I mean, let's just say something like this. There's queen e1 check, and now everything is collapsing. The pawn is hanging and everything. Mm, yeah, yeah. So you cannot go for anything like that. So, um, yeah, queen d3 also uh, could also be an idea. Mm. So you can't really do that. And if you go back to f3, then... Um, 
What was it that we said? Was it queen? Queen, queen, queen too. It just just looks very an- annoying for white. It's very very annoying because you're friendly queen in one check, but also queen pick f two, of course. So you have to go queen h four, and then we have queen in one check, and it's just uh, you, you you are pinned. You don't get out with your pieces on the queen side. Yeah, you have to go queen h four. Mm. And then everything is pinned. Mm, and maybe, and this, mm, yeah, so this is just very good. Now black is winning here. Yeah. No, yeah, there's even bishop c7 check now. And, and everything is collapsing. Mm. Um, but anyway, so this it was impossible. So that was why queen f3 was played. Now you can maybe go for knight d3 um, and try to get your pieces out. So rook e8 was played just to attack the knight. And then bishop e3. And this was a very important move because mm. you see all of a sudden black, black gave the pawn but he has got all the pieces out because all the activity and so white has to uh, fight back has to use his other pieces the bishop and the rook so bishop e3 was just forced you has to you have to change one of the pieces but also you have to avoid that black is getting down to the second rank and can be active there with and, the rook, yeah. and with, with the rook so so this was just the very uh, was was the best chance to, to to play what the Nakamura played here. Yeah, and that's even if these pawns look a little bit weak yeah. right now. Yeah, so so you have this, uh, you're not very happy to have to play F take E3, but this was the only way to keep it, to keep the advantage or, or to get out with the pieces. And so, uh, yeah, so, so th- this was the best chance. And now the, the next move was a little bit uh, of a surprise, actually. Yeah, we, were th- we thought that rook d1 will be played just to support the, the pawn with the rook, but instead d6 was played. And mm. suppose the idea is to look at the pawn on b7. Yeah, exactly. But white now is planning uh, to take on b7. After that, a and a, the pawn it will be back rank problems. There will also the pawn on a7 hanging. And w- if white gets the pawn on a7, after the queen can come back to d4, it will be a very very good square for the queen on d4 so uh, here black has to be a bit uh, careful mm. yeah no it has to be very careful uh, this pawn could become very very strong mm. so uh, queen d5 was played mm. um, and here yeah rook d1 just attacking the queen and now black is or uh, white is giving this e3 pawn because yeah. after queen takes queen knight takes this pawn is hanging. Mm, exactly. So white thought that yeah, I have to give back one of the pawns, but I want to stay with the deep pawn, or and I want to get uh, even maybe he might lose the pawn. He lost the pawn, but I, w- I want to have some activity. And now we see the rook is coming into the play finally. So uh, so this is a little bit what you have to do. You have to give something back for to get activity. Yeah, you need to give something back to 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 your activity for sure. So rook takes e three, and rook d five, and now yeah. you see the acti- we see the activity. Yeah, finally, because now uh, the the point is just to now there's two threats actually. The, well, well, you, you're threatening knight d five, knight d five, and just pushing the pawn. Just so pushing and promoting. Mm. So and you also have this plan rook c seven, rook c five, rook c seven. So knight d five is just a very very big uh, threat here now. Yeah, rook c five, rook c seven. Um, and then we also after that we can say that if if, if black plays on random if you go knight d5 you say king f8 we go knight d5 and you go king e8 well let's see this rook king f2 what are you going to do with this rook is it's almost uh, it's almost trapped here it yeah. just getting out uh, yeah it, it just becomes uh, such a and you maybe you can go even king f3 and after we can go rook c5 and we're getting in the rook in and down to the seventh yeah so, so hmm. which is everything that we want basically. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Exactly, we have uh, so many pieces there. Yeah, we have so, so much activity. Mm. So black had to avoid this. Mm. By going f6. So black is avoiding the knight from coming up to e5. Mm. And there's another important point. You're also bringing in your king uh, afterwards. So you, you, you now there's no back rank mate uh, also. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, oh, sorry, this king. Yeah, of course, you're bringing the king in. So you create a path for the king. Mm. So rook c5. Mm. Um, yeah, I guess now the idea is to go rook c7. Mm. And rook e6 immediately attacking the pawn. And then at this point, white decides to give up the pawn, mm. but to get activity in return. Mm. So rook takes d6, rook takes b7, a6. A6. And now we see this, this end game. And it looks like, you know, we have equal pawns. Um, uh, black has military on, on the king side, white has on the queen side. But what is good for white is actually that we have this d4 square. And the d4 square is a fantastic outpost for the knight, where it will stand in the center, it will look at both the king side, the queen side, 
and it's not possible for black to take it away. And from D4, the knight will actually dominate the, the D7, the, the, the bishop, the black's bishop. Yeah, mm -hmm. this bishop will become a big... I mean, it'll, it'll become uh, very inactive because, like you said, from here, all these squares are basically taken mm. from the knight. Um, so, yeah, so knight d4 was played and then h5. Mm -hmm. um, and h4 was then played because, I guess, if white, black, white is able to push h4, then... You know, th that would be very dangerous because you get uh, the pawn, your pawns in this pawn on h4 will also keep him back g2 and h3 and you see the bishop will also be playing so you don't want to allow that it also no. will restrict the king and it will create more weaknesses so it's very very important next move is over white here yeah to go h4 and to stop the pawn from pushing yeah and we normally want to stop the pawn to be on a black square and we also want to stop it on the fourth line so it doesn't pass the uh, it doesn't out. get into into white's territory mm -hmm. because it also wants to be on a dark square because white has or black has a light squared bishop and um, if if the pawn is on a on a dark square then the bishop cannot attack it mm, exactly mm. so g five was then played and white did not want to take here because then it would create a pass pawn I suppose so g three was played so that um, the the pawn could just be taken back because I guess this pass pawn is not as scary as you know if, if black had both of these. Exactly, mm, exactly. No, h4 and g3 are two very very important moves. Uh, they doesn't look maybe so so big moves, but they are very important, and you have to keep the black's pawn back where they are, and you have to stay with your pawns on the on on black squares. Hmm. So king f7, the king is trying to come in, and then king f2. King g6 and king e3. So both kings are, are now becoming active because, you know, the kings need to be active in endgames. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. They it's become it's one more piece. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. They are the one of the most important pieces in the endgame. So we have to play with them. Rook d5 um, and rook a7 attacking the pawn on a6. Mm. And um, in this position, I mean, there isn't really much to do apart from going back because bishop c8 is just so passive, mm. I guess. Mm. Yeah, yeah, no, it's passive. The, the, There's the, maybe even knight c6. Knight, knight, knight c6 is very, very, very annoying. So you, you, can't, you can't let the knight come to c6. So it's normal to go back. And now b3 was played. Mm. And the idea of b3 is, is it to start pushing c4? Yes, I think now, actually, I think the threat is c4, c5. And after c5, you see, where is the rook going? You, you can't be on the sixth line. No. And then it, it's just, just uh, it's, it's very, very uh, dangerous. The c4, even if you, you will you will change in one of the pawns, but it will be marching. And the knight on d4 is such a good uh, supporter uh, of, of the pawn and taking away all the squares for the black pieces. Hmm. Yeah. So bishop e6 was played, mm -hmm. and uh, now rook c7 to support the c4 push. Mm -hmm. So rook d5, and now rook c6 was played, attacking both the bishop and the pawn on a6, because now this is just a. Uh, now this pawn is just going to be lost, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. Just, now it's lost, yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I guess that. The reason why he didn't go for c4 now is just, well, because he could win the pawn. Mm, exactly. Yeah. Mm. So was rook d5 a mistake then? Uh, By black. Uh, I don't know. what uh, This is before four. I'm not sure because c4 is such a big threat. I threatened c4, c5, and c6. And you see the rook on c on the seventh rank is very good because it's also, you know, the black king has to stay on the king's side. The black king cannot come back, come to help. And for black, it's so much more difficult to create a pass pawn here. Because if you do something like f5, maybe you have just knight f3, and y it, y you you will control the black squares. So I I, I think uh, I think uh, black thought that he had to create some activity, and that's why he went rook d5. Uh, yeah. Uh, so he decided to do that because then he can enter through e5 mm -hmm. and start checking. So rook c6 and now rook e5 check king f2 to defend the pawn, bishop d7 attacking the rook. Mm. Now rook takes a6. And then, yeah, black started to play against this pawn on h4. Mm, exactly. Mm. So rook d6 attacking the bishop, bishop c8, and then rook d8. Um, and yeah, I mean, white is right now just basically attacking the bishop. It's like, yeah, it, it's 
it's yeah, it's like a game. I mean, White is just doing everything to attack the bishop, and and where does the bishop go? Um, and I guess yeah, I guess bishop g4 was played now, but um, he has such a big problem because yeah. if you go bishop b7, it asks me you will give a check, and then you go rook b8, and the bishop keeps on having problems. <laughs> you have nowhere to put it. Thanks so to this knight, this knight is just so amazing. Yeah, exactly. The, this knight is dominating the uh, in the center. And it keeps you know everything under control, and uh, so so it's such a much a much more stronger piece than the bishop is. Yeah, much better piece than this bishop, and the bishop will never be able to exchange itself for this, of course, because mm. it's in a dark square. Mm. So bishop g4 was played, and now that the bishop is over here, it is now blocking the rook from taking the pawn on h4. So that was the idea with all this, of putting the bishop over here, mm. so that the rook could not be attacking this. So it was almost like a like a defensive move mm. to go for all this. Mm. So rook d5 was played now attacking the pawn on b5. Um, and the reason why knight takes b5 was not played here was because now there's this check and then white would lose this pawn. Mm. And it's white does not want to lose the, the a pawn. Mm. No, no. White uh, only will take on b5 in the best conditions possible without giving any kind of, uh, give the minimum um, counterplay for black. Hmm. Bishop c8, the bishop went back just because, well, black wants to attack the pawn, black needs to get some sort of counterplay. If king g3, there's rook g4 check, you're losing the pawn because rook king h3 is never possible because there is this discovery check. This bishop is amazing on c8, so mm. you can't do that. So rook c5 was played. Mm. Yeah, again, yes, the telling uh, black that uh, you don't have any good square for the bishop, where are you going to put it? And so we have, okay, bishop d7, and... Uh, the, start, the, the thing starts again. Yeah, it Rook starts. c7. Uh, and now, I think so, because if you go bishop g4, maybe knight c6, knight e 7 could be coming. There could be some... Uh, no, bishop e4, uh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not sure what he would play, but it would be very... Maybe as rook b7, and you are again very restricted. Yeah, I think actually after this, if knight c6, there might be this check. Mm, yeah, it is check. No, you don't want to allow that. But may maybe yes, it, but... Black play bishop e8, yes, not to allow yeah, the knight. But then you're getting, maybe then you're getting a tempo. Maybe then you can start going a4 and start pushing. Yeah, it's possible that that would be the right way because uh, it's difficult for, uh, that you can start to it when the bishop is far away from the queen side, yeah. So bishop e8, knight f3, mm. rook e6. The rook just, you know, now that the knight is on f3, the knight is, is defending over here, so now the rook isn't doing that much over there anymore. And now rook a7 to prepare for a4. White wants to start pushing their past pawns. And also to defend against rook a6 so you don't fall, the, the pawn would not be falling. Hmm. Oh yeah, that's a really important point. So rook a4, now again the rook is starting put, to put pressure on, on h4. Rook a8, bishop again is being attacked. King f7, and rook d8. And I guess now the idea is to go rook d5 mm -hmm. and start putting pressure on h5. But I think this is just so interesting how, how Hikar is just basically moving his rook around and he's trying to put all his pieces in the best squares so he can start pushing his pawns. Exactly. And it, it, exactly. So, so he's really taking care of that black cannot take the pawn on h4 and he's maneuvering around. And you, now he got the bishop on e8 to be more passive piece just to defend on b5. And he's ready to go into an endgame where you change the rooks, but he will be very careful. And black will be, of course, be careful. He, black needs to keep the rooks uh, here on the board to try to create some uh, counterplay. But we can see how he's maneuvering around and how he makes life very difficult for black. Yeah. Rook e7 was played. Mm. Um, and then rook d2. It mm. looks a little bit passive, but he wants to, it's very important that he can defend c3 pawn, he can defend the pawn on a2 also. So that's why he had to go back and he, yeah, maybe later on he can go the knight to d4 also. Mm -hmm. So now he's going back to e4. Mm. And now he goes to d5. Now he goes to d5 because before black could play rook a7, hit the pawn on a2, but with the rook on e4, you cannot do that. Mm. Yeah, exactly. So that is why he's now, whenever the rook moves, now he chooses to go here. Mm. So king g6 defending the pawn on h5 and a3. Yeah, it looks maybe like a, a funny move, but, but it's quite, I think it's quite important because um, we will see, because if he's, 
Yeah, we'll see what will happen. But it, there is a, a big point with putting the pawn on a3 here because black is a little bit I in a suk swang. There's not so easy for black to do to do anything here. Yeah, in because a if the bishop moves here, then you know the pawn is hanging. Mm -hmm. Bishop can't go here if bishop c6. Well, then we kick it away. Yeah, we'll kick it away, and uh, yeah. So so uh, yeah, th we will kick it away. And I don't know, maybe if we afterwards, maybe we can go some C4 and we start moving our pawns. I'm not exactly. sure. So he had to play what he did or he had to go bishop c6. This is only the two moves black have here. So rook 7 was played and the mm -hmm. idea is, I guess, to start attacking the pawn. Mm -hmm. um, knight d4, now this pawn is being attacked again. And now rook 4 once again, mm -hmm. looking at the pawn on h4. So at this point, finally, I guess Hikaru decided it was time to, to give up the pawn on h4. It was finally time to capture on b5. Mm. And then rook takes h4. Because black couldn't change the bishop against the knight. This rook end game with three pass pawns would just be winning. And this is actually, if we had this position, position, we had the rook and white had no pawns on the queen side. With these two pawns, it's not clear you are winning because there are some de very defensive skills. So two pawns which are not connected are not as strong together. So this would be, yes, very, very easy winning for white because there's still the three pawns on the queen side, they stay on the board. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, these pawns are just amazing. Mm. Uh, so knight d4, the knight comes back to its best square, rook h2. The king has to go somewhere. So the king goes to g3 to prevent h4 and to also attack the rook. And now rook d2. So the 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 idea I, I, it's to pin the to pin the knight I suppose and to threaten rook d three check winning this pawn, mm. um, and this was why c four was played, um, which which is a great move. It's a great move because you defend the rook, so now if it's necessary you can move away the knight, but you also defend the pawn on c three because after rook d three the pawn on b three yeah is very it's defended. well by the knight, and we see this knight on d four. It's just such a great piece. It's amazing, absolutely amazing. So rook d3 check was played here, and now the king went up to h4 to prevent the king from coming up because king wants to lim this king wants to limit the opponent's king's mobi mobility. So bishop f7, the bishop is kicking the rook away, and uh, the rook needs to stay over here, of course, to defend the knight. And uh, now white started to push the a4 pawn. Mm -hmm, exactly, because the other pawns you can push because uh, with the bishop. And so it's quite good. They are all defended. But after a4, we are one step closer to get to the to the last rank. We want to push as much as we can. Yeah. Uh, as uh, without losing anything. Yeah, of course. Hmm. So rook h1 check, king g3 and h4 check. And black is trying to do the same thing. Black is trying to have this pawn become as strong as possible because this is the only counterplay that black has. Mm -hmm. So black went king g, or white went king g2 to threaten the rook, but also to defend the next, uh, the next pushing square of the pawn. So black then went rook c1 and um, yeah, the, the, the idea of rook c1 is, is to stop white from playing c5 mm, exactly. to start to push the pawns but what does white do then they push the other pawn mm -hmm. but, <laughs> so that's the main thing with having so many pawns you can choose uh, which one you want to push uh, exactly exactly so it will be so it's, it's so difficult for the rook to, to stop stop all of them yes so now king h5 was played because if something like rook a1 to attack this pawn then there's actually c5 in this position um, so now you start pushing the other pawn, you give up this pawn because you can go c6. It's really hard to stop c7 and uh, c8 promotion. So if you go rook c5 to try to stop this, you go b4. And now this other pawn is going to be marching up as well. And if you go bishop d5 check, um, then the king can simply go to h2. And this is really important because now after rook c5, threat attacking this pawn, um, you have b4, you cannot take here because you just take back with the knight. Um, and now there is no check. If the king was here, there'd be a check and then you could capture. And now you cannot do that because this is not possible because the knight captures it. So now the rook needs to, well, I don't know where the rook is going to go, but then you're going to go b5 and now you have the same thing. The pawns are marching and you're going to win. And also the, the bishop on d5 is hanging. So you, you oh will yeah, lose, you you're will losing lose. the bishop too. You're losing everything. <laughs> <laughs> you're losing everything, actually. Um, so yeah. So actually, probably if rook takes c6, the best move is to go rook takes d5. 
No, but you can take on C6. This is actually the easiest way. Because you take on C6 and you, you, will, you will just push your B pawn and you will win the bishop also. So actually, I, I would just uh, take yeah. on C6 because uh, the bishop is so much stronger and then I will just the kick the... The rook is so much stronger. Yeah, the rook is so much stronger and I will just kick the bishop and then I will march down yeah. with the pawn. Everything is winning there. But yeah, so, so that is maybe the easiest way. So anyway, so king h5 was played, that was why rook a1 was not played. So now he did this really beautiful move, which is king f2. And the idea of this move is just to put the king on a dark square. A little bit of dark square, and it's also a little bit if, if black tries to get in somehow to get a very active king running to the queen side, there's no way to enter. So it's actually, it, this was just a very fantastic move and very difficult to find because somehow we have the pawns, we want to rush with the pawns. But sometimes you have to make this defensive move. But it was not easy at all to see it no. because it moves away from the h5. So, but it was just very nice move. Also, sometimes you might want to go knight e2, and if black pins it, the knight is already defended by the king. Yeah, and if something like h3, then you can just go king g3. Mm -hmm. You're stopping the king from from pushing. Uh, or you're, yeah, you're stopping the pawn from pushing, I mean, and I mean, this pawn is, is going to be very weak now. Mm. If something like rook h1, then you can just go rook h8 check and then you win the pawn. Mm, exactly. Mm. So king g4 was played. And now another just really nice move, rook f8. And I think it came almost instantly. <laughs> Hikaru spent like 15 minutes for king f2. This was a top engine move, which nobody thought, well, many people thought he wouldn't find it because it was just such a hard move. And then he just, you know, king g4 was played after a little while. And then Hikaru just went rook f8, like in a second, um, which was just incredible. He had calculated everything. Mm. So h3 was played here because if, if the bishop goes somewhere, where's the bishop going to go to g6? Um, if bishop g6, for instance, then there's going to be rook g8. Uh, oh, we, we might even take, uh, I don't know, we, we might even take the on f6, actually. Can we do that? Yeah, uh, but I think this is the line we calculated before. Yeah, that's easier, maybe. Yeah, if we do that, king h5, we have knight e2, and after, after rook c2, we have king e3, and this knight f4 is coming. Exactly, so, so this is just very strong immediately. Yeah, yeah, that, that's much better, and we are pushing back the black pieces, absolutely. Exactly, so, um, so you don't really want to do that, so... Instead, Radyabov went for h3, and this is now a very forcing line, because the idea is that, well, the pawn is trying to promote, so what is going to happen, and this is really forcing, is that rook takes f7, h2 is the only move, and now if you would go rook h7, well, then you're going to promote, and you don't really want to give black that sort of counterplay, because the rook is going to be really strong against this knight and this pawn. So you need to go for this rook g7 check first. If the king goes anywhere on the h file, there's going to be rook h7 check, and the pawn is going to be falling, so you need to go king f4. No, and no, king f... Okay, so, sorry. Mm -hmm. And then uh, there's knight e2 check. This is a fork, but after the king moves, you cannot take the rook, because then there's going to be a queen, so you go knight g3 and then you're stopping uh, you're stopping the pawn so whenever the pawn takes then you're going to be taking back and then you're going to be you know playing this rook end game which is a completely winning one so rook c2 check um, and now the king just went up to f3 because whenever this rook leaves this file uh, if, if the rook ever goes to c1 to try to promote or anything there's king g2 so rook c3 check and now the king went to g2 um Rook takes b3, and now white just pushes. Mm. So black was hoping that there's only two pawns, that he can stop both pawns with the rook and the, and the king, because the king now is, is not so far away from the queen side. Exactly, the king is not so far away from the, king si from the queen side, but rook a3, a7, protected by this. King d4. Now, it's really important to not do a move such as rook c7, because then... Boom, boom, I'm kidding. <laughs> then boom. <laughs> and now you cannot take back because then you make a queen. So you need to take here. And now this uh, would be a draw, most probably. Yeah, that would be a draw. Uh, so, so no, you, you have to avoid this. You have to avoid this. Um, so knight f5 was played. And after king takes c4, um, Hikaru went for rook b7, which is a really beautiful move, cutting off the king. Um, and now the king cannot really go up. And now after um, after king c5, he goes knight e7 to take away this last square that the king could go up to. And in this position, Radyabov, he didn't have anything and he resigned because what is coming next is knight c8, rook b8, 
and then promotion. Mm, and exactly. there's no way of stopping it. No, there's no way of stopping it. So this was a great game uh, by Nakamura. I was very impressed by how he uh, first of all, the, the opening, it looked very interesting what to play. Then uh, Radiabov find this fantastic D5 move, giving up the pawn, getting counter play. And then uh, again, white, uh, it looks difficult for white in that position. Yeah. Uh, Nakamura find a way and it was uh, equal. Yeah. But then again. He, he, he played. It was a fantastic endgame. Yeah, it was fantastic endgame. It looked like it was equal, but it was a nice equal for White yeah. somehow with his knight and the square on d4. Mm -hmm. And he was able to win, you know, su such an equal endgame against such a strong player. Mm -hmm. So that was a fantastic game. And that was why we wanted to share this game with you because out of all the games that we saw today, all of them were draws and some of them were really interesting. But this one was really the one that captivated us the most, of course, because it was a decisive result, but also because of the fact that it went from being, uh, you know, such an equal position to actually being a win. Uh, and it was a beautiful endgame by, by Hikaru. So, yeah, I hope that you guys enjoy the game um, and that you enjoy the analysis. And yeah, tomorrow is round number three for the candidates. Tell me in the comments what you think, uh, who you think is going to win the candidates in mm -hmm. general, you know, who you're rooting for and who you think is going to is going to win. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs> Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Bye bye. <laughs> Don't bye. forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>